Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. We're just going to give it a few more minutes till 2.30, and then a few more after that, just to make sure everyone has time to join. But thank you for coming on today. Hi, everybody. Hi, Iskra. We are just waiting till 2.30 and a few minutes after that to allow people to join. So thank you again, everyone who has already joined. We are gonna give it a few more minutes and then we'll get started.
Hello, everyone. Last time I'll say this, we're just going to give it a few more minutes for people to join because I know 2.30 just struck. Um, I still see some people coming in, but thank you for joining us and we'll get started in at 2.35. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on the Ready Up NYC webinar series. My name is Abigail, and I am part of the Ready New York team here at New York City Emergency Management. Um, and I will allow, allow our guest speaker to introduce herself, but I do want to thank her for her time today and ask uh, to hold your questions to the very end. We will have a Q&A session, um, but you can throw them in the chat uh, so you won't forget them. Um, and I will pass it over to Stacy now. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Abby, for that introduction. Uh, my name is Anastasia Powell, but feel free to call me Stacy. I am a regional preparedness liaison with FEMA Region 2, uh, the Individual and Community Preparedness uh, Department. And I'm really glad to be presenting the Emergency Financial First Aid Kit today. Uh, Abby, am I good to roll with the presentation now? Great, all right. Uh, so one thing that I wanted everyone to keep in mind with uh, this tool is that it's essentially a guide to help you plan financially for emergencies, right? But it is not, a one size fit all plan that we are giving to you that we expect everyone to apply to their lives. It is uh, something that can help you plan and adapt to any emergency that you know might come about because you would be financially prepared. So Abby, next slide. Uh, we're just gonna show you this little video and then uh, when the cloud we'll chat about it. Form, the rain pours and water is all around. You'll ask yourself, how prepared or unprepared are you? Did you raise your utilities, appliances and such? Install a sump pump, clean the drains, 
just in case it decides to rain. Do you know your risks? Have you checked the local plans? You should cover your property with a flood insurance policy. Is your emergency supply kit packed? Is your family prepared? Do they know what to do, where to go, and how to stay safe? Because when the water starts to rise, you must act quickly and be wise. Turn on your radio, listen for updates, and if authorities tell you to go, hurry up and do so. Get to safe ground, go as high as you can, do what you need to do, but don't put yourself in harm's way. Just inches of water can sweep you away. Once the water is gone, move carefully. Be on the lookout for dangers you can't see, animals, debris, and electricity. Do not go home until you hear the all clear. Now when you get home, be aware. Not everything is as safe as it may appear. So before the clouds form, the rain pours, and water is all around, get prepared. Make a plan and keep yourself dry. Get started today. Go to ready.gov prepare. Thank you. Uh, and as you may have no noticed in the video, uh, if you're not lucky enough to have a turtle helper with you, uh, you will be responsible for a lot of cleanup, for a lot of uh, emergency evacuation planning on your own. And that comes with costs, right? So to have gas to leave the city if you're being told to evacuate, if you have a car, um, if you happen to be the car that gets you know, swept away in the rain or there's some type of tree damage, um, while there is insurance for all of these things, if you don't have insurance, um, you're responsible for those costs. And uh, the reason we went with uh, flooding is New York City is impacted by hurricanes. Um, and you know, it happens here quite often. And while the idea of having a large saving savings account is a very nice start, uh, it is not all you need for financial preparedness, right? There are other events, other documents that you need to take into account. Um, and that's what we'll be discussing today. So here's a little statistical uh, pie chart for us. Uh, one in three people uh, from the 2020 household survey say that they do not have emergency savings. 40% uh, only have less than seven hundred dollars set aside, um, and recently we, you know, discovered that less for the average American cannot afford a four hundred dollar car repair. So imagine if um, you were the person who was evacuating with your little turtle friend, um, and there is rain events, and you, you know, are putting everything on a credit card. When you come back, and your house is not necessarily in the greatest repair. Um, how are you going to address those needs? How are you going to um, recoup costs? And, uh, you know, for understanding how to plan for that, we recommend using the EFAC tool. Um, Abby, let, next slide. Uh, so this is the link to the EFAC tool. I believe we'll be sharing that link with you in the chat function. Um, and if you, if you need a hard copy, there is a Project Hope that will help you uh, they will mail you one. You could also, you know, download it off of the FEMA website. Uh, next slide. Great. So um, I was talking to you about not just, it's not just about money, right? So financial preparedness and having that action plan also includes having household identification, household information, um, financial and legal documents, um, financial account information, medical information, and making sure you know you have um, emergency or hotline contacts for info for the household. Um, it's remarkable what a phone tree would do for an emergency locally. If, you know, one person's being told to evacuate and no one's in the area yet. Having someone who's able to call you and say, you know, don't come home, go to your emergency site, things like that. Uh, so we'll go into each of these one by one. Next slide. Oh, okay. Great. Um, I personally love uh, the chicken friend that we have here, but you have to. Keep, uh, we all have uh, people that we care about. Sometimes that includes our furry and feathered friends. Uh, so one of the things you need to have, you know, for them are you know pet tags, proof of ownership. If you have any microchip information uh, to provide proof of identity for them, you know, if you're coming back home or you're going to a shelter to pick them up, you want to make sure you have that. Uh, sometimes having a picture of yourself with the pet is recommended. You know, we tend to have a lot of those on our phones. Um, so you can show that you have that information that, yes, this is my pet. I claim them, taking them home now. 
Um, also, for the non furry and feathered friends in our household, um, identifiable information like a driver's license, birth certificate, social security cards, passport, and any naturalization or identification documents that you feel you would need. Um, and if you lose anything, um, like your passport, you know, make sure that you have, you know, copies of any other information that you would have in your, you know, EFAC tool, also your gold bag, which uh, our nice and friends strongly re recognize and uh, uh, recommend along with us. So next slide. Oops, sorry, one second. Yes, so household information. Um, you should have the contact information for every member of your household. That includes kids. Uh, so if you are having, you know, their school information, if they're with a babysitter, if um, they have that information in their book bag or, you know, any contact information that you can get a hold of, that is a really good thing to have in this EFAC tool. We have an area where you can list all your emergency contacts for your network. So name, date of birth, uh, any relevant contact information, whether it's work or school, uh, for everyone in the household and main and maintaining and reestablishing contact with members of the household is very important in general, but it's also important to update these phone numbers and uh, emails and whatever it is you're going to use to communicate because while somebody might have changed their number, if you're calling them in an emergency and they don't pick up, it, that kind of defeats the purpose. Next slide. All right, this uh, little video is kind of going to orient us to financial and legal documents. Being financially resilient doesn't have to cost a penny, and it can have big benefits to reduce our stress in an emergency. Let's use the Emergency Financial First Aid Kit, also known as EFAC, to organize our financial and legal documents to prepare for a disaster. This will help us show proof of income, maintain payments, reestablish our financial accounts, or apply for disaster assistance if necessary. Don't worry if you come across unfamiliar terms. There are organizations like Operation Hope who can help for free. Get the EFAC today at community.fema.gov forward slash EFAC. Granted, uh, the video has better music and sound than I do, but uh, just a little recap of that, you know, financial and legal documents um, make sure you identify any financial records and responsibilities. Um, if you're, you know, reestablishing financial accounts or you're changing PIN numbers, adding someone to them that you have um, that information and that you're ready, you know, to make a payment for, let's say, electricity or rent if you have to evacuate and you don't need your checkbook, things like that. Um, documents that you may, you know, need to keep in the EFAC is a lease, rental agreement, mortgage or real estate deeds, utility bills, uh, loan uh, payments for vehicles, any copies of you know, ownership for a car, um, any credit card numbers, bank numbers, any verification codes. Um, a really good one to have is a copy of your student loan agreement. Um, so you, you know, know how to make those payments. Uh, banking statements, investment accounts uh, to prove, you know, that you, in fact, do have these accounts. Um, so if you have to, you know, grab your EFAC tool and run an emergency, you have uh, access to all of your documentation for your billing. Uh, and speaking to companies, you know, who can begin recovery, like we had said, you know, if something happens to your car, it'd be great if you had your car insurance information in this tool so that you can call them. Uh, and your utility company, if something happens and you don't have power, there are ways um, to communicate with them so that you're not being charged when you do not actually have the utility. Uh, so just moving on, medical information. Um, this one I particularly think is the, not the most important, this is all important, but um, having a copy of your physician's contacts or your optometrist, whatever doctors that you see, copies of your health insurance, ID cards. For, and this is, again, for everyone in your household, right? You might not all be on the same medical insurance. Uh, and even if you are, the numbers for your health insurance IDs might and will probably be different. Uh, you should have record of any immunizations, allergies, list of medications, 
Uh, copies of current prescriptions is always a good one, making sure that if you are um, currently going to a smaller business for your prescriptions that they know that, you know, you might need to call your doctor or have a paper prescription. But if you're using a big chain, uh, such as, you know, CVS or Walgreens, that you have an app and that you're able to uh, have the login information for that and uh, renew your prescriptions there. Next slide. So the emergency and contact info. Um, information for your family is very important, uh, but also the people in your network that you might not necessarily think of immediately. So any information for financial or other advisors, um, health professionals, service providers, a good one might be your landlord, your doctor, um, an insurance agent, any social services representative. If you happen to have a lawyer, uh, in your contacts, just in case you have you need assistance through these processes. Um, and you know, in general, if you're a part of a network like a book club or house of worship, or you know, if your kids happen to be in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, that's a network that you can tap into um, that you might want to have that information in here as well. We also have the FEMA app uh, where you can um, upload, you know, some contacts and have um, sorry, excuse me, where you can uh, receive emergency alerts and you know, forward them to your contacts. It's also helpful for knowing um, if there is a disaster declaration and what the recommendations are. Uh, it's also helpful for when you are trying to reestablish or change your plan. It has access to uh, the application for when we are declaring a disaster to receive uh, assistance. So the application can be done there as opposed to having to go back and forth trying to uh, commit to an application. And that also means that you need to be tech ready, which means having your phone charged or a per portable charger, uh, once again, in your go bag. So our four steps for uh, financial preparedness, if we're breaking it down to, you know, more of a bite-sized items, is to assess and compile important financial documents and contacts. While we have a list, then I have gone through somewhat of an exhaustive examples. Um, you will know what's important to you, but if you don't, we have suggestions in the EFAC tool that you can look at and say, wow, I never thought about this person as a contact, let me add them. Um, making sure you review insurance policies, see, what you're covered, see what's covered and what's not. Um, we have a lot of experience with people thinking that something was covered in an emergency and finding out it wasn't. Uh, and those costs often had to come from their own pockets. Uh, safeguarding these items, we're telling you to put a lot of information um, that is pertaining to your life. You wanna make sure that they are safe. Uh, so if you're going to have paper and electronic copies, make sure they're in a safe location. Uh, we often recommend that you put it on um, a USB drive if you're also having paper documents, that way you can just grab both at the same time. While the cloud is also an option, um, it is not always easy to access the internet, but it might be easier to plug into a computer. And then update, right? You made this great plan, um, and then a year or so goes by and none of the information is relevant, you are in the same boat all over again. So making sure you are revis revisiting and updating the EFAC uh, regularly. Next slide. So assessing and compiling. Um, so essentially you wanna stop and take stock of what you have, right? You have documents, um, you know what your family is going to need, but some tips that we have are um, to stop and have people start taking some photos if they're home, right? Take photos of you know, your apartment, of what everything looks like, of your car um, on a day that's completely normal. Uh, so when you need it and you need to say, you know, this was my reference, this was the date, um, I have record that this was perfectly fine before today. Um, and emphasize that uh, this can help others in your household prepare for a disaster. Um, so, it's not just for one person. We recommend that you include the entire household in your EFAC planning. Um, 
sorry about that. Um, so we recommend you keep copies of the pictures and videos. You can keep them on, um, you can scan them if you're more of a, a physical copy person, uh, keep them on the drive, keep them on your phone, um, making sure that you keep cash somewhere safe uh, since you're not easy, it's not easy to withdraw all the time at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, some individuals were saying they didn't have access to their bank or they physically could not get there. Uh, making sure you have at least some cash to buy things that we've learned are essential, such as toilet paper. Um, we recommend that you have enough for two weeks of day-to-day -day basics for your family, uh, but that is really up to determine, you know, that's determined by you and what you think uh, you would need. But we recommend you have things for food, gas, um, if you have any kids, you know, what they would like, what they need, formula. Um, making sure you know what your credit score is, is really important. Uh, so you can get, take a look at that. We posted the link. And if any of this seems inundating, if any of this seems like um, this is a lot of information and you want someone to explain it to you step-by-step, step, Operation Hope is attached here. And it is their hope and their aim to give access to financial counselors uh, to help you sort through any of this uh, financial planning that you're planning to do. Next slide. Uh, as I had mentioned previously, reviewing what you already have, right? So the importance of getting insurance can never be overstated, whether it is renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance, car insurance, health insurance. Um, you know, a 2020 National Household Survey found that only 22% of people had flood insurance. Um, and I know from experience of my colleagues who were working through Hurricane Ida in New Jersey, a ton of people said, you know, they did do the step of looking to see if they were in a flood zone and they were told they didn't need flood insurance. Um, but as we know, climate changes quickly and turns out they did need flood insurance. The foundations of their homes that they had just built were compromised. And you know, luckily enough, it, there was a disaster declaration that helped them in recouping costs, but that's not always going to be the case. And while we would love to help absolutely everyone, it is a great place to start by getting flood insurance. And we have the National Flood Insurance Program, which can help you um, figure out what the best plan is for you and help you get that insurance up to date. Uh, another thing that we might wanna consider in terms of insurance is setting up a will a living will, uh, any life insurance policy or health insurance plan. And once you have that, making sure you review it with your family so they know what to expect. Next slide. Uh, I had mentioned safeguarding before. I'm gonna go a little more in depth to that. Um, I do have a short anecdote. Um, I happen to have an older member of the family who was a nurse for several years and swore that she knew exactly how to safeguard her documents. Um, and by that, she meant she had a paper file that lived in the top shelf of her closet and nothing had happened to it for 40 years until it flooded in her neighbors above her. Um, so that is to say that while it is great to have paper copies in a safe place, it is also very important that you store these in a fireproof or waterproof box. Uh, safety deposit box, if uh, you have access to one. Um, if you are you know, technologically savvy, you can store electronic copies um, online. You can also store them on a flash drive in a password protected form format. So even if someone happens to get it, they would not be able to break into it with ease. Um, and in addition to what you have, how to safeguard those files, it is also important that what you have in those files is worth safeguarding. So what you have, um, if you fill out the EFAC tool, you can download a copy, save it in that drive, along with all your general copies of you know, your favorite pictures, whatever you don't wanna lose. Uh, it's a great thing to have. Our, essentially, we say redundancy is key. Have a digital and a hard copy of all documentation. Next slide. Our friends at the FTC urge us to urge you to uh, help them prevent identity theft. So make sure you um, I can identify if there's a customer service rep who is asking for a PIN or a social security number that you know who is calling you. 
Uh, it is oftentimes uh, that the elderly are scammed, but sometimes it catches any of us by surprise. Uh, if you think that you have been compromised, you can contact the FTC and they will uh, investigate for you. Oftentimes you can contact your financial institution, bank and credit card companies, and they will assist you in preventing identity theft. Sometimes they uh, authorize free tracking to make sure that there are no new accounts made in your name. And I think I definitely recommend it if your institution offers it. Um, and according to the Electronic Funds Transfer Act, reporting loss of debit or ATM card before unauthorized activity occurs means you're not responsible. So if you get that card cut off and someone goes and buys a car or attempts to or uh, the newest iPhone, they you are not responsible for that. Uh, and it also might be easier to track them down. Next slide. And we cannot stress this enough, update the EFAC regularly. There will be changes. Um, for example, if you had a job promotion and your W-2s or you know how much you can afford changes, it's a good place to start. Um, every year, sometimes insurance companies change. If you need to put in uh, your new tax documents, if you open or close an account, change in marital status, if your child changes schools, the contact information will change. So make sure that it doesn't need to be this very large task where you take all these documents out and change everything. It's really just looking through when, you know, keeping in mind for events such as your child started junior high school, they're no longer at an elementary school. Okay, let's put the new school information in, things like that. Next slide. Um, so now I kind of want to, you know, ask, uh, I know we're not going to be able to answer the question now, but a brief pause on, you know, if you're not prepared at the moment, if you don't have, you know, the EFAC tool or you're not signing up for alerts, uh, what's holding you back from that? Just take a second to think about it. And if any of those motivations are financial, or if they're not, uh, we recommend that you reassess. Um, no one thinks that they're going to be affected by an emergency until the emergency happens. Um, you eventually, you know, it's it's of an eventuality more than um, happenstance. We were all impacted by a pandemic. We live in a place where it rains. Um, having a plan is preparing for. The, la the lack of panic, right? So you don't wanna say, oh no, I wasn't prepared for this. Now I have to think of something. Even if you have a plan that isn't exactly for the circumstances that you're in, you have something you can adapt. Um, or if it's really just something that you cannot think about, you have a network that you can tap into because you've made a contact sheet, you have the FEMA app, you have Notify NYC and people who can help you in an emergency. Uh, so while the reason why the EFAC is particularly important is before a disaster, uh, it helps you create, uh, it's a tool to help you pull everything together to help you apply for disaster assistance and preparing you to save for money in the long run, which in theory and in practice uh, is quicker to recover after a disaster slash emergency if you are prepared for it. Sorry, Abby, I threw you off on the slides there. Um, this one uh, is very simple. We say, you know, after emergencies, if you have the EFAC tool and you are financially resilient, you will be able to just bring that document, bring that folder, that flash drive, whatever, wherever it is that you are saving or have access to that information with you and say, I need to apply for disaster assistance. Here is everything I have. And uh, whether ourselves, um, at FEMA or our colleagues at NISM will be more prepared to help you sort through what it is that they can help you with. Next slide. Uh, some more information about uh, disaster assistance. We have a website you can log on to to find, um, figure out what documents you will need for each disaster. Uh, but as I mentioned, it might be if you are more comfortable with your phone, it, you can also use the FEMA app, but uh, for more information on your computer, you can use uh, disasterassistance.gov. 
And our final plug for preventing scamming. Um, we were, in terms of a financial, sorry, in terms of a disaster assistance, it's important that uh, you make sure who you're giving your information to is an authorized individual to help you. Um, with that folder that you have, with the EFAC tool, with whatever documentation that you need, uh, we want to urge you that if you're going to a disaster recovery center, that somebody identify themselves as, hi, I work at FEMA. Uh, I'm here to help you. And, you know, something that you can always ask that we are always, um, that we have no shame in showing, regardless of how bad the picture is, is our ID. Um, whoever, uh, if you're uncomfortable and you aren't sure who the person is, you know, you can ask, hi, can I see your FEMA ID? Um, same thing with anyone uh, in our, our friends at NISOM, and I guarantee no one will tell you, nope, sorry, I, I'm not showing you my ID. Um, they might tell you the picture's not great, but yes, I do work here. And that is just one good way to get, um, to ensure that you're working with someone who is authorized to help you. Another way is to use the FEMA.gov app and just submit the information yourself if you're able to. Here are some additional resources. As I mentioned, Operation Hope is an organization that actually created the EFAC tool with FEMA um, and whose goal is to uplift communities by disseminating financial knowledge and tools and programs. Uh, the Small Business Administration, should you have a small business, um, help small businesses succeed. Um, and while this presentation was mainly for personal finances, it can be a good resource to adapt to a business. And I'm sure, um, you know, calling Project Hope as well and the Small Business Association can show you how to do that. Um, the My Money tool, I think, is a great tool, not just for, you know, adults, it's really great for kids. Uh, it's financial literacy and uh, Education Commission's website. They have a kids tab to show you how to save and what the correct information is to informing financial decisions. Uh, anecdotally, I personally uh, have Googled in the past, I won't tell you how recently, uh, how to fill out a check. Um, and that was one of the first uh, sites that come up that gave you advice on how to fill it out properly. Um, so it might be really good for your teens going off to college to show them, you know, here is how to manage your finances, let's talk about it. Um, American Red Cross, you know, the helping others with their workforce, volunteer or network of donors. Um, and then, you know, ready.gov, which is our preparedness website. Uh, it has more information on small business, the EFAC tool in general, and then smaller preparedness bites. We have a bunch of games on there too, should you want to engage your kids. And I think that's it for me today. Um, ready for any questions. Thank you, Stacy. And I also agree that although I may not want to show my ID and will say that my picture is ugly, I will still show it to anyone that asks. Uh, so we'll give it a few moments. Uh, throw your questions in the chat. Uh, Stacy is kind enough to leave us uh, her email address so that if you do have any questions after the uh, presentation, um, you can always follow up with her. Uh, I see someone in the chat wrote, Princeton has a huge poster in their admin office showing how to write a check, which I think is amazing because I also did not know how to do one myself when I went off to college. Um, so I appreciate that. And a quick plug while people are still thinking of some questions, uh, I wanna thank you all today. This was uh, in combination with FEMA, but uh, New York City Emergency Management uh, also does presentations. So if you are interested in uh, a small booklet that can help you with your plan, with your family, uh, we offer those online for free, both digitally um, and as well as a print version that we can mail home. But if you are part of an organization, a school, house of worship, uh, we also come out to do presentations in uh, various languages. Um, if you're interested in more emergency preparedness, information, I suggest following us on one of our social medias. Uh, this webinar today, as well as uh, uh, many others, was recorded uh, and will be up on our website and on YouTube. Uh, so we, you know, appreciate you coming today. And if you liked what you heard and you want to share it with someone, please feel free to do that. So I'll give it a few more minutes for questions. 
If not, we thank you for your time today. We'll give it about five more minutes in case anyone has a, a question. Uh, while people are waiting, I'm actually gonna do a shameless plug for the FEMA uh, preparedness webinars too. I think Abby, I'll drop that in the chat if that's okay with you. Yes, the uh, more resources, the better. Exactly. Uh, we have pre-recorded webinars on here from the last three years. Um, some of them, they have the preparedness uh, materials as well. And if you need any, feel free to email the address that was up earlier. Um, and we'll be happy to send them along to you. Um, I think we've, we've done um, a little over 300 webinars that uh, feel free to scroll through and share with your network. So we actually do have a question and it's, can you put the contacts for the EFAC and app in the chat? Absolutely, I can drop that in now. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, just a little uh, PSA about the app. Um, while I am posting it to a Zoom, it will likely take you to the page of your uh, mobile device so that you are able to join, uh, sorry, so that you're able to download it through that um, store. So you might have to uh, search it on your phone, but you can use uh, the FEMA website in general uh, for any additional information. Okay, I know this was a lot of information, but I hope it was very useful and I don't see any more questions in the chat or in the Q&A box. Uh, so one last thank you uh, for everyone that attended and a big thank you to Stacy and her team for putting this presentation together. Again, if you have any questions, I will pull um, Stacy's email back up really quick so everyone can have it. Um, Other than that, we are all set for today. Have enjoy the nice weather for today in New York City if you are here.